Welcome to Usability and Human Factors Information Visualization. This is Lecture B. By the end of this final lecture, students will be able to describe how information visualization can support and enhance the representation of trends and aggregate data. As we mentioned earlier, real-world data sets are usually quite complex. They include multiple variables and are often very large. This creates a problem for information visualization, as often it is impossible to fit all data on the same screen. A common solution to this problem is to include a combination of the entire data set visualized in a very condensed way, and a view of a subset of data in a greater detail. Two common approaches to presenting overview and detail are to use scaling either in space or in time. In case of scaling in space, overview and detail occupy different portions of the screen. In case of scaling in time, they take the same space but alternate in time. Let's take a more detailed look at different scaling techniques. The three common ways to provide overview and detail on the same screen are fisheye views, bifocal display, and perspective wall. Fisheye views follow the same principles as a fisheye view lens of cameras. They show the central focused area in great detail and all areas outside of this focus in a condensed way to preserve context. Fish eye view approaches have been applied in different areas. Here is an example of using a fish eye view method to a list of items. As you can see, a few items are in focus and the rest of the sets are in a condensed way. This view allows users to examine items of interest while reminding them how long the list is overall and where they are within the list. Here is an example of using fish eye view concept for graphs. Bifocal display uses a similar concept, but instead of radial distortion of everything outside of the focal view, it folds the visualization in three parts. The main focal part is then shown in great detail. The other two peripheral parts are shown in perspective. Here is a particular implementation of a bifocal display. Perspective wall uses a variation on the same idea. It uses a real three-dimensional perspective to distort areas outside a focal view. Here is an example of how a perspective wall could be used to show a large diagram on one screen. It could also be used for file navigation. The two common approaches to using time scaling are magic lens and panning and zooming. Magic Lens follows an analogy of a magnifying glass. A user is given a tool that could be moved over the visualization. All the data covered by the tool is presented in great detail. However, it obstructs its close neighbors. Panning and zooming are two similar techniques. They allow the user to move between different levels of magnitude, zooming in on data in more detail, and zooming out to the more condensed overview. Many datasets are inherently hierarchical. For example, in clinical datasets, patients' family history is inherently hierarchical. The two main ways to represent these data types are node link and space filling. Node link hierarchies are very common in diagrammatic representations. A common way to visualize file structures is essentially a node link hierarchy. Some common problems with this visualization is that they quickly fill out screen real estate and that it is difficult to maintain overview of the data. Here are some examples of node link hierarchies. An alternative approach to representing hierarchical data is space filling. Smart money is a popular example of this approach. In smart money, high-level categories are represented as rectangles that fill the main space. 
As these categories are divided into lower level ones, so are the rectangles. A very common data type in healthcare is time series. Much of patient health data can be considered as time series. A common way to represent time series data is on a two-dimensional graph with time usually indicated on the horizontal axis. Here is an example of time series calendar data. Linear graphs are the simplest and most common ways to represent time series data. However, often these data are periodic, following such cycles as seasons. A better way to represent periodic time series data is in a circular or spiral way. An additional benefit of spiral displays that changing their temporal cycle can help to discover periodicity in data. There are many situations in which no clever distortion technique can help designers fit all data on the screen, or the data is so complex that no one visualization can help to uncover its hidden properties. In these cases, designers often use interactive visualizations that allow users to actively explore them and vary their dimensions. The two techniques we will discuss here include details on demand and dynamic query. In details on demand approach, the details could be removed from the view, however, made available on demand. For example, a user might hover the mouse over a particular point on the visualization to examine its components. Mouse over is a common way to trigger details. Dynamic query is another common approach to designing interactive visualizations. In this approach, users rely on interactive elements such as sliders or buttons to change properties of the visualization. For example, they can add or remove variables, change resolution, and so forth. In the last part of this lecture, we will talk specifically about information visualization in medicine. In the field, visualization can help to achieve several important goals. It can help to visually present medical data in a more intuitive, easy to understand way that also makes it easy to learn, recognize, navigate, and manage the data. It can help to visually magnify subtle aspects of the diagnostic, therapeutic, patient management, and healing process, which otherwise could be difficult to notice. Finally, it can help prevent information overload and allow members of clinical staff to master large quantities of information. Currently, information visualization is not very widespread in electronic health record systems. However, they are gaining momentum. Researchers and designers explored several different approaches to visualizing clinical data. One way to visualize patient data is to structure it around physical systems. For example, here you see data about the patient shown around the patient's organs and body systems. This visualization focuses on clinical decision making. It shows a diagnostic flow, decisions, and plans in regards to patient care. One of the earliest and classic approaches to visualizing clinical data is through time series. Here, we show visualization by one of the most prominent thinkers in the field, Edward Tufte. In this little view, a lot of highly condensed data allows clinicians to quickly grasp the challenges in patients' conditions that could lead to quick decisions. Here is an extension of the graph we showed earlier. This visualization combines several different types of data in the same display allowing the user to explore different components of the data simultaneously. This concludes Lecture B of Usability and Human Factors Information Visualization. To review, we discussed why any medical decisions are based on the ability to process information, the amount of available information is increasing exponentially, which is leading to information overload, and finally, that information visualization can help to make processing of information more effective and more efficient.